Hey, it's Stephanie Johnston with the Johnston team of Service First Mortgage and wanted to share some information with you guys about interest rates. So everyone wants to, of course, make sure they get the best rate. That's why we are here to optimize uh, what rate's available for you. But we want you to understand a little bit more where this crazy stuff is coming from. So on the pa these page here, um, there's 30 things that affect your interest rate. So a lot of people don't realize when they say, what's the interest rate today? Well, everyone's rate's different. So they have a different start rate if you think of it that way. So some examples of what would change what start rate a client would obtain would be things like the loan amount, um, the loan type. So is it FHA, conventional, uh, VA, uh, the loan term. So the shorter a term of a mortgage, the cheaper it is. So a 30-year fixed, for example, is going to be a little bit higher of a rate than a 15. 15 would have a higher payment though, so compare and contrast and we'll see what works best for you. Uh, things of, is it fixed or an arm? So sometimes you see some really low teaser rates out there. It's because they're arm rates and they would be fixed for a very short period and they would move with the market. Another one is cash out. So are you doing a purchase loan? Are you taking cash out? It's risk-based, so a cash out transaction is a little more risky, so it's, it's priced that way. Occupancy is a huge one. So there is different pricing if it's someone's primary home, a second home, or maybe a rental. And uh, type of property. A lot of people don't realize that a, a condo is a little higher of a rate and so is a multifamily than a single family. Credit score. So credit score is one of those things that um, it plays a really big factor into what rate you can obtain. So if uh, one of the other videos we have here is credit planning. So even if someone is fully qualified on a mortgage, if we can do a couple things to pop the, you know, to raise their score a little bit, sometimes that may make a big difference in what um, mortgage that you, uh, interest rate you obtain. So all kinds of other things on this list, but just one main thing, everyone's start rate is different. So the online quote is not necessarily going to be the same thing as uh, for everybody. Those are best case scenarios. The next thing I want to go through with you guys is points and uh, what this means, what real terms does it make most sense, etc. So on this screen, you're going to see an example that we worked up in terms of different interest rates available on a given day. So this is again just a screenshot, an example, not necessarily where rates are at this very moment. But the main thing to remember is the more you pay a lender in cost, the lower their rate is, the higher the interest rate is the less in cost. So that is the same premise on any single day that you call a lender. And what one option may work for one customer may not work for another. Also on advertised interest rates, sometimes lenders choose the really expensive cash to close option to make their interest rate look better so that you'll pick up the phone and call them. They're also gonna base it on the best case scenarios from the screen before, where it's got everything and anything um, that's perfect with a situation that may or may not be your situation. So again, um, a lot of people are familiar or have heard of the term points, not exactly sure 100% what it means, so this goes over a bit of it. And then remember, a lender doesn't have to call it points. So they can just charge, I wanna call this a fee and I wanna have it fee. They can charge origination is another one. So whatever, the more in lender costs that are associated with the loan, the lower the rate. So if we were to look at this and say, okay, when we normally quote a customer, we're starting at no points, no origination. So the cheapest cost in which we're not giving you a credit, but we're not charging you anything else either. So in this example, that rate would be 4.875 here in the middle, and it's got you know the no point option, so zero points. And you say, okay, that's a great option. Well, I wanna look at lower cost options. Okay, well generally paying a 1% fee on your loan is gonna drop your rate about a quarter percent. Now this is different every day, but a general you know perception here. Then, so we've got dropping that to 4625. Okay, great, lower rate. 4.375, two points. Well, what we need to look at is over here, okay, how much am I spending to get this rate? Well, it's 1% of the loan amount, so not your purchase price, the loan amount. So in this scenario, in a $255,000 loan, that's $2,055 or $550 for extra cost. So if we went down and you said, okay, this 4.375 option, would you want to pay $5,100 to save $73 a month? Well, it really depends. 
how long are you going to be in this property? Is this a term that you're going to be here for a, a super long time or is this you're going to move in two years? Um, that's something we consider. But it's also not as big of a difference in most clients' monthly payment as they think it is by getting that lower rate. It really just doesn't make that big of a difference. So we look at what we call the recovery point. So down here, let's move this screen just a little bit here. We go down here and you know the average home loan is in place for four years or less. And in this scenario, either on the one or two month or one point, it takes 66 months to get my money back. So five and a half years. So if this customer really had this loan for 10 years and did not refinance key, did not refinance this thing, and kept the same approximate loan balance, they'd get their $5,100 back at year five and a half. And then after that, they'd save $76. So as you see, it makes a difference if they're going to be in the house short term, long term, you know, what's the best for them. So this is where it depends on the customer for which one is the best option. Now, the opposite school of thought here that a lot of people don't think of, there's actually what you call no cost loans in which a customer might take a higher rate and trade off for me paying their closing cost. And when this is a great situation is, let's say that they're not going to have a loan that long. They're going to live there two years or they're going to, um, you know, basically almost they have a house to sell and they're going to pay this thing off or down significantly after we close. So there's two ways that when you say no cost can be interpreted. Does that mean no lender fees? So if it was just no lender fees, in this scenario, we'd probably only be about a 5% rate. So about eighth of percent and then we'd have no lender fees, nothing to us. But the example I show is I went up to five and a quarter and we not only had no lender fees, but we paid everyone else's charges that did that we didn't we didn't have any part of. So like the title company, the appraisal, the survey, all of that. And so um, depending on the loan amount and you know how much credit we'd need, that's a good tool sometimes, especially if maybe you don't have enough money saved to get into a property. So if it's a short-term house and, and you're a little bit short cash to close, that might be a really good solution to look at. It's called premium pricing. So hope this example shows a little bit about every rate's different. Depends on the customer for which one works the same. Advertised rates are usually going to be the uh, cheapest options shown, um, in the, the cheapest rates shown, but the most expensive closing costs. So don't fall for that advertisement thinking that that's going to be the cheapest cost associated. And uh, that's a, a good little bit about points. Thanks.